I'm going to tell you about a trend in immunoprecipitation that may surprise you. It's an exciting shift that I don't think you'll want to miss out on. In just the last four years, the number of published papers using sephiros and agaros for immunoprecipitation have declined, while publications using magnetic beads have increased significantly. The data is clear and easy to find on Google Scholar. If you look at all journals, the increase is 46%. Then, if you look at Nature alone, the numbers are even more significant, close to 200% increase for magnetic beads. So why is that? Agarose and sephiros were first used to purify proteins, which is actually quite different from immunoprecipitation. Sephiros is comprised of cross-linked polymers that have all these holes and pores in it. It was designed this way to provide a high surface area for interaction with proteins, and you could pass large amounts of sample through it. This also makes it possible for the slurry to hold a lot of liquid. You could think of it like a sponge. Naked sephiros and agarose in and of itself doesn't specifically bind to proteins, but when combined with different kinds of surface modifications, this will allow protein binding. And it's worked great for a long time. You could purify lots of proteins that way, milligram quantities, no problem. But then scientists wanted to study proteins from cells to understand their importance and interactions. They began to isolate specific proteins and protein complexes on a much smaller scale. To achieve this high specificity, they use protein-specific antibodies, and this method is called immunoprecipitation. And for this, the priority of quantity moved to a higher priority of quality and specificity. The application changed, and at first they were trying to use the same tool. For antibody purification, sephiros is a great tool. For immunoprecipitation, it turned out to be not so well suited. You only have a certain amount of antibody, and you want to specifically bind a protein. When you look at it this way, the pores are bad news because they actually trap the antibodies and unwanted proteins inside and between the porous resin. And this background is hard to wash away and requires extensive washing. Now scientists needed something different. They needed to isolate specific proteins and protein complexes, some of which are not stable. They needed smaller and faster incubations, and they wanted to spend less time on washing. But sephiros and agaros, there's a limit to how fast you can go because of diffusion kinetics and repeated centrifugation. So it takes a lot of time for protein absorption, washing, and elution. And when sephiros and agaros are used in tubes for these smaller incubations, it's quite difficult to handle. It can be a real challenge to remove all the buffer from the tubes without disturbing the slurry, and you don't want to accidentally pipette off and lose some of your sample. You have to be very careful. But at the same time, you want to remove as much of that buffer as possible. This isn't easy at all. There had to be a better way. And scientists found that they could use magnetic beads and that they're actually better in many ways. The magnetic beads have a defined outer surface where all the protein binding happens. They don't have all these pores and holes. And there's no inner surface or dead volume to trap unwanted proteins. So now you bind only what you want and you get a very low background and a high signal to noise. Magnetic handling is incredibly easy and efficient. A magnet gently pulls the beads over to the side of the tube. You can easily wash in a loot by applying that magnet. Pipetting the liquid around the magnetic beads is a lot easier. You don't run the risk of losing some of your sample during pipetting, and you can remove all the buffer. The sample handling is much more consistent and this reproducibility is clearly seen in the results. One approach could be to make sephiros or agarose magnetic, and this could be a lot easier to handle, but you would still have many of the same challenges with trapping impurities because they're so porous. Whereas magnetic beads have a defined surface, so you don't have all these challenges. So scientists started using the magnetic beads, not just because they were so easy to use, but because they gave them the results that they want. The sample handling is very gentle on your protein. There are fewer processing steps, and if you want to, you can even automate the whole process. And there's no upper size limit for the proteins you can isolate. So now you can even separate fragile protein complexes. Faster kinetics means faster specific binding. With short incubation and efficient washing, it's so much easier to keep the background low. You get more information in less time. Imagine two tubes one with lots of magnetic beads in it, and all of them are exactly 2.8 microns. 
and the other with cephros, varying in size from 50 to 150 microns. It's easy to understand that the kinetics in the tube with the smaller magnetic beads will be significantly faster and more reproducible. Short incubation times is also a good thing when you're working with proteins or protein complexes that are not that stable. Quite often you see disassociation or even proteolytic damage to protein complexes when you have to incubate for too long. Remember the trend I showed in the beginning? Hopefully you now see some of the historical and scientific reasons why this is happening and why scientists are moving over to magnetic beads and away from cephalos. You can learn more about how to update your immunoprecipitation method with magnetic beads on our website. You can also check us out on Facebook and Twitter.